From Rare Gym Productions, this is Let's Get It Together. Class is back in session. It's the money classroom. From basics to building wealth, budgeting to a blessed legacy. It's all right here. Access, information, and opportunity. In the classroom. Grab a notepad. Today we draw from the wisdom of our elders. Our grandparents knew the true value of money. And what did they understand that we need to take hold of? You know, what they really understood is they had a grasp upon Proverbs 4 and 7. Mm-hmm. And wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Mm-hmm. And when we can get wisdom and we get a full understanding on this money thing and, and get an understanding on this finance part, it impacts every single mm-hmm. phase of our lives. All this and more. So let's get it together. We'll be right back. I'm Jade Harrell. Fifth Third Bank is the proud sponsor of The Money Classroom. Hi, this is Jade Harrell. I don't know about you, but I get tired of mailing my bills. Writing out checks, putting on stamps, licking the envelopes. Ugh. I hate that taste. But even if the envelopes had a pina colada flavor, who has time to do all that? With Fifth Third Bank, you can enjoy online bill payment and some extra time. Best of all, you don't have to lick any envelopes. (laughs) It's a simple, convenient, organized, and fast way to pay your bills. Choose the bill payment date that works best for you and let the bank do the rest. Unlike a lot of banks, keep your funds in your account right up until the due date. You also get a balance that helps you keep track of your funds. It always helps to manage your payees and it gives you a convenient snapshot of your billing information. You'll receive periodic email alerts keeping you informed on information changes and bill payment activity. Now, doesn't that sound good? With online bill payment, you're licking your time management problems instead of licking envelopes. And you're saving trees, too. Be good to the environment. Just talk to your nearest Fifth Third banker or visit 53.com and search online bill payment. Fifth Third Bank, the curious bank. Member FDIC, bill pay subject to internet banking terms and conditions. Now here's Make It Happen with Keith Sales Pro. What do the most successful people do every day before 8 a.m.? Well, rise and shine. Love it or hate it, utilizing the morning hours before work may be the key to a successful and healthy lifestyle. That's right. Early rising is a common trait found in many CEOs, government officials, and other influential people. Margaret Thatcher was up every day at 5 a.m. And Robert Iger, the CEO of Disney since 2000, wakes up at 4.30 a.m. every morning. Here are five other things you must do. Number one, exercise every morning at least 30 minutes a day. Number two, map out your day. Set your goals and priorities for the day. Number three, eat a healthy breakfast and all meals when possible. Number four, visualize the day. Meditation, prayer, or quiet time. Number five, make your day top heavy. Put most of your workload at the beginning of your day when you're the freshest. Today, remember, it can happen. It will happen, and together, we will make it happen. Follow Keith Sales Pro on Facebook or Twitter at Keith Sales Pro, or visit his website at KeithSalesPro.com. It can happen. It will happen. And together, we will make it happen. Let's get it together. Come on in, everyone, and take your seats, please. This is The Classroom where we get a front row seat to expert instruction, information, and access. You won't leave the way you came. This classroom is all about knowledge. And knowledge is power. And the power is yours. Now, let's get it together. In the classroom today is Royce Sutton, Senior Vice President and Community Development Director with Fifth Third Bank. And welcome back to the Money Classroom. It is my delight that we enter another season of sharing financial literacy, understanding, and depth just for you. We are talking today with Royce Sutton, Vice President, Community and Economic Development Manager with Fifth Third Bank. And Royce is drawing from the ages. We are going back. We are looking to our ancestors. There's wisdom that comes from our grandparents. Oh, it is. It is. It is a pleasure to be back. I am excited about our opportunity to sit down and talk about one of my favorite topics, and that is financial health and money, but more importantly, how we can build up a community of people who know a lot more about how to handle their finances in a way that's productive for 
their future. That's right. And, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the wisdom that we all have gained over the years. You know, we've got some resources around us. Sometimes we don't necessarily utilize them, but we've got seniors, we've got mm-hmm, grandparents, mm-hmm. we've got those who've been down the road for a little while, and they understand what it means to be financially healthy. Mm-hmm. So we need to tap into some of that wisdom, some of yeah. that knowledge, and we're going to talk about wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing that we're going to talk about today. All right, then let's go in. Let's dive right in. Okay. And what did they know and what did they understand that we need to take hold of? You know, what they really understood is they had a grasp upon Proverbs 4 and 7. Mm-hmm. And wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Mm-hmm. And when we can get wisdom and we get a full understanding on this money thing and, and get an understanding on this finance part, it impacts every single mm-hmm. phase of our lives. Money is important. We all have it. We all desire it. We all have to manage it in some type of way. Now, how can we do it in a way that we can draw upon the yeah. lessons that our grandparents sure. taught us? Sure. And some of those lessons are so very valuable. Yeah, they are. Real quick, though, paint a picture of what it would look like. What could things look like if we did get a hold of this concept? Well, let, let's start with our sleep. Maybe we could sleep a little bit longer. We wouldn't <laughs> have to right. worry about some of these things that are easily besetting us, uh-huh. things uh-huh. that are on our mind, True. things that are troubling us around money. Mm. It could help us to begin to make decisions that we don't look back and say, why did I do that? <laughs> How did I get myself into this? And For why sure. am I doing this thing in regards to money? It's that type of peace of mind mm-hmm. that is comforting and the place where so many of us want to be yeah. when we talk about finances and we talk about trying to elevate our level of decision making, just our thought process around what money can do and right. how we do that right. the proper way. Right. right. And it will make us more productive. It will. So tell us what they taught us. My grandparents, they had no more than a third grade education, exactly. and they were some of the smartest people that mm-hmm. I have ever mm-hmm. known. And so I've picked up some of my lessons from them, and I like being around seniors, and I love to hear their stories. And oftentimes they'll give you the sage advice. Yeah. Yeah on different things. And for example, on the money, back in the Depression, there was a number of hardships that people had to endure, black, white, you know, young, old. People learned Mm -hmm. to adjust their lifestyle because of the economic conditions that were going on. And there was a saying that was very prevalent at that time. And it went like this, live within your means, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Mm -hmm. Use it up, wear it out, Make it do or do without. I love that. And that saying is so profound for us. Yes. And the whole area of use it up. Mm -hmm. That, you know, Mm -hmm. we've got this idea that we need to keep accumulating things. And we'll look in our closet and we've got paper towels stacked up for who knows how high. Mm -hmm. We've got groceries in the pantry. We found a sale and we've got 20 cans of green beans and we don't Mm -hmm. even really like Mm -hmm. green beans. (laughs) We've got all these things that we've accumulated And back then, they were very frugal and understanding Mm -hmm. that anything that you buy, you need to make sure you use that uh, before you start before you buy more. That's right. That whole process of really thinking about consciously thinking about: Do I really know what's in my pantry? Do Mm -hmm. I know what's in my closet? Do I have a good understanding of what's in my home before I go out and repurchase? Now, how many of us, I've done the same thing. Mm -hmm. How many of us have gone out and you bought something, you saw it, and then you get home and you have the exact same thing at your house? Yes. And you're wondering, now, okay, is this a problem with me remembering? Mm -hmm. Is this a problem with my consumption attitude? Mm -hmm. Or is it I just don't have a handle of what I've got out there? Well, we don't ask the question. We often laugh it off or say, oh. And then keep on about the way we were going. But use it up. Use it all up. Uh It's so valuable. Yeah. So use it up. The next one is wear it out. So Mm -hmm. these are the things that we actually do have. And when you talk about wearing it out, you take, for example, like an automobile. Yeah. An automobile, I mean, they're making them at such a high quality level now. You can keep an automobile for a lot longer mm-hmm. than you could in previous mm-hmm. years. That's true. If you keep the oil chains and the maintenance up, you can keep an automobile for a long time. Uh, you used to be saying you're going to drive the automobile till the wheels turn square. That's right. Truly <laughs> wearing it out. Right. I mean, getting the, getting full, the full maximum value, value out of go. what you have purchased yes. so that you aren't purchasing the same thing over. Aren't we doing that quite often when mm-hmm. we look in our homes? We keep buying the same stuff over mm-hmm. and over and mm-hmm. over. Well, this whole process that our grandparents talked about, they wanted to take something that they buy, they buy something of quality, there you go. and then they buy that in such a way where they keep it 
for a long period of time so that it wears out rather than being just replaced readily. Yeah. So that is one of those things from a financial standpoint. Mm-hmm. When I talk about things that I can do to be more efficient with my dollars, mm-hmm. how I can use my dollars in a wiser way, I need to know what I have. And then when I have that, take care of it. Right. And then when I take care of it, then I'm going to think of it as something that's not just temporary, but something that's long term. And so I don't find myself purchasing the same thing over and over. And then the next area is make it do. Mm -hmm. Make it do. Okay. Now, what you may have may not be perfect. Oh, sure. Uh, You may have an item or something, but you know what? Sometimes we can find a way to make it do with what we have. There we, go. we can find a way to modify certain things. Mm-hmm. You know, our grandparents were absolute masters at taking things and reconfiguring mm-hmm. its use mm-hmm. for another purpose or getting the maximum value out of that. We've got to come with that same mindset, yeah, too, because mm-hmm. then that keeps us from having that consumer oriented approach to life where we feel like we need to go out and buy and we need to go out and purchase. We need to replace. And we don't necessarily need to do that. Take something that you already have. Right. And then just change its sure. use so that you can get extended use we out of that. We certainly could take a lesson from that page. Mm-hmm. And it can eliminate so much waste. Things have become so convenient. Mm-hmm. And I think of an example of a friend that just came home with a brand new box from the hardware store of a blower vacuumer, a leaf lawn blower vacuumer. And I says, wow. That's cool. Now, I thought you had a blower already. Well, I do, but this one vacuums, and they were thrilled. Well, they were so thrilled they forgot to notice or or failed to notice that you had to replace this little bitty bag several times because it only had a small capacity to pick up when you'd vacuum, whereas the same shovel, blower, shovel combination, and maybe a little bit of effort. And I says, well, what effort would this save? What time, value, or effort does this save you by having this thing? Well, the best answer they could give was that, well, it, it can get into the corners. <laughs> well, you know, we do that. Oh, this space, we do, but things have mm-hmm. become so convenient. And that is probably an example of what you're saying by make it do. Maybe that broom, that mop, that shovel could have made do uh-huh. as opposed to it. So then it manifests in our finances. Yeah. I mean, it, we spent the money. It, it impacts us when it we does. when we're not making wise choices or not getting the full maximum. Value. Let's say, for example, you've got two bottles of ketchup. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> and you've you got a brand that you tend to favor. Yeah. It's gone. It, it runs out. But the brand that you don't particularly like is still sitting Sit there in the, the closet. Yeah. Why are we not using that? It. it may not taste. The taste may like not be it. as good. But you know yeah. what? You take some seasoning mm-hmm. and you make that do what you want it to do. Make it do. And make do. I love that. The next area, Jade, I want to share is do without. Well, uh, do see, without. We you know, there are that. some things that we feel like are absolute need, and some things truly they, they are need. But sometimes we meld together need and want, mm-hmm. and getting a good understanding of what those are. There's are some things that we simply don't necessarily need, and some things that we don't even really and truly want. We just feel like we just need to have it. Right. Let's really reevaluate, and this will save us a lot of money. For sure. Really evaluate what things that we can absolutely do without. Do I really need to make four stops on the way to the store? Do I need to make all these different errands that I'm using up all this gas, all this time that I'm losing? Because time is money. It is. These are things that we can recapture when we go and start really thinking about the course of our day so that it's more efficient Mm -hmm. and some things that we can eliminate altogether. And that applies to finance. That applies to relationships. Mm -hmm. That applies to every aspect of our life. There are some things that we absolutely can do without. Well, it's going to take some practice because we've really gotten comfortable about having what we want, when we want, and the way that we want it. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to spend a lot more time with the, in the classroom. With the, the, with, in the classroom. <laughs> come on back. And you got to come back to the classroom. But we'll spend more time with our seniors. We can learn yes. a lot from the value, the lessons that they have sure. they've picked up along the way. Here's the next one. Cook okay. at home. You, well, yeah. Cook you at home. Now, 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 you know, th- this is a problem for us here in this great country of ours in America where 40.6 percent of our food budget is spent eating out now. Forty uh, percent. Yeah. I know families where they eat out nearly every meal. Mm-hmm. You can save a lot of money. You can eat more healthy by eating at home. 
It takes a little bit more time. And you hear people say, well, I just can't cook. Everybody can cook mm-hmm, something. Mm-hmm. And if you just take the time, you've got YouTube videos That's you can right. pull up. You've got cookbooks, recipe books out there. You've got friends who can show you. You can learn how to put together a healthy, nutritious meal for yourselves and mm-hmm. for your family. Mm-hmm. It's just all about a matter of reordering your time yeah. and making that happen. The other thing, too, is take advantage of free things. There are a lot of free, there's free stuff out <laughs> no, there. You know that? No, not that it yeah, life is yeah, free. Yeah. And, and seniors, those that have been around, our grandparents, they took advantage of those things that were absolutely free. Mm-hmm. Advice is free. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we, can, we can take on that. It can be really helpful for us. But there are a number of free things that we can find out there. For example, why not go to the library as yes. opposed to spending your time and your money Going to the video store mm-hmm, or going mm-hmm. to, or to Barnes movies. and Noble or, or the movies. Go to something and take advantage of all the free. In fact, when you look at ebooks, yeah. you can get a lot of those books from your public library for free. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to spend the money mm-hmm. on those books for those that are readers out there. That's and true. then also then you recapture time. You can recapture time with your family. Yes. You don't have to go out and spend money and go do this and do that. We, we want to fill mm-hmm. our day mm-hmm. with activities and things and right. stuff right. when we're not necessarily we're overlooking the quality of time that we can spend mm-hmm. Doing nothing, sure. perhaps. Maybe sure. we can stay at home sometime. Well, you that's, know? <laughs> that's you know, and it's easy to get caught up in that with the rate and acceleration of our days and the way our society and our culture is. I've heard often folks say, well, I'm not going to do nothing because I don't have no money. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> not necessarily being in a dire strait or in a position that you have limited finances, but that it's OK mm. not to do things. But you don't have to have money in order to either. Right. Why not take that time? You could go to the library, check out a, maybe you want to learn French. Okay. Then you're adding to your skill base and make you absolutely more employable and you can earn a higher wage because you picked up a second language with all this free time that now you have recaptured. Uh Another wise tip that I picked up from senior is understanding that we need to plan for the worst. You know, sometimes eventualities do occur and and there are things that are going to happen. Plan for things breaking, things coming apart, relationships changing. We've got a plan for the worst because those things are going to happen. We keep living. We keep breathing. Mm-hmm. Something is going to change in our lives. And seniors can understand just over the continuum of time. They yeah. can look back and see They've how things that. have changed for them. And the message that they would share back with us is just be prepared That's right. for those things That's that right. may happen. Well, you made it clear by saying they are going to happen. Time will continue. Circumstances will will come whether our eyes are closed or not. And another thing out of the depression you hear a lot of seniors talking about is pay cash. Yeah. Pay cash for things. When you pay cash, you tend to spend less. Okay. When you pay cash, you understand the value because you're actually taking money from your purse, your wallet, from your hand into the other person's hand. There's something about that exchange yes. between your hand and the other person's hand. You're actually seeing those dollars go away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> and mm-hmm. when you see those dollars go away, you can put a lot more value on it than taking a credit card that swipes. Yeah, you you, you lose you the value there. That's true. You lose That's the true. value. And so there's the something intrinsic look, about that. It is. It is. By the time you look at the statement, you're, you're, you then say, oh, where, where did it go? Which is also one of the things that you taught us in earlier classes about keeping track of our transactions. We've got to know when and where those things occur. And then the last one that I'll leave with you that I hear from so many seniors is, and it's something that's not new, nothing okay. novel, but we just need to take on is save. Save. Put money Put away. Put some money aside. Put money away. Yeah. It, it, My grandma said it that. Yeah, it does. Optimal sagely advice that is valuable, so plain and simple, valuable, tried and true. Cook at home, utilize free stuff, understand and plan for the worst, pay cash and save. And of course, the mantra, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. And when we do these things, we'll be better prepared for ourselves, our family and our future. For more information regarding our discussion today, you can contact the Fifth Third Bank Financial Empowerment Hotline. And if you'd like us to cover a topic on this program, you can share that as well. Many times, your question could bring forth an answer that helps all of us. Learn more at 53.com. That's 53.com. And call the Financial Empowerment Hotline at 314-889-3333. That's 314-889-3333. 
Let's Get It Together is made possible by the grace, mercy, and provision of our God each day. Try Him, trust Him, and learn more in the B-I-B-L-E each day. Make Let's Get It Together your access to information, education, and opportunity. Subscribe to the podcast. Find information about our guests, news, notes, and video are ready for you at LGI2.com. That's LGI2.com. This week, get a fresh new outlook. Let's get it together. Be inspired, informed, encouraged, and entertained. Let's get it together. In the classroom, information, access, and opportunity. Let's get it together. Special thanks to the Rare Gym family, Harold, Clear Channel Radio, and Christopher Harrell. From Rare Gym Productions, this is Let's Get It Together.